Hi everybody, welcome to my homestead and welcome to my channel. My name is Jared. In this video, we're going to talk about a new embassy that was open in Israel. This is from the Jerusalem Post. First ever indigenous people embassy in Jerusalem is the 100th embassy opened. So, um, you may have some questions about this, but I'm going to address all those. And there's a, there's a lot of interesting details about this story. Namely, that uh, out of the different indigenous peoples that make up this group that's opening up this embassy in Israel, uh, we have what you and I would consider Nephites and Lamanites, namely Polynesians and Native Americans, among other groups throughout the world. And uh, I, just just hold on, there's, there's interesting stuff. So I found out about this through Mindy of the Temples of Jesus channel. Make sure to check her out. Uh, one more time, in case you haven't seen it, she posted the There's Only Two Things Left Before the Second Coming, um, like the raw footage of that, in, in case you want to hear it for yourself. So I'll put a link for that in the description box below. Make sure to subscribe to her channel. Okay. Um, also, just so you know, uh, all my featured channels are here on the home screen of my page. So you have all them. You have Troy, Mindy, Joni, uh, Jen from Christian Fire Poppy. Michael, he's a member of the, the Tabernacle Choir, and others you can go to view all, so you may want to check that out. Um, and then, uh, okay, so let me give you an update really quick. Here's the Flood the Earth Challenge. Uh, we're at 8,245 copies of the Book of Mormon shared so far. We're trying to get to 10,000. The channel goal is to try and share at least 10 each of us individually. And if we did that, uh, this would be a much higher number. Of course, we don't have to run faster than we have strength, but we should at least be moving, I think. So uh, please share the Book of Mormon. Whether you participate in this challenge or not, just just do it. You know, we're trying to prepare the world for the second coming. And we do that by gathering scattered Israel, both on this side of the veil and on the other side of the veil. So do family history work too, but I'm not going to be tracking that. <laughs> um, whenever you report... Uh, sharing a copy of the Book of Mormon or someone meeting with the missionaries or a baptism, make sure to include hashtag flood in your comment or your email. Uh, please don't send it via social media like Instagram or Facebook. Do it either email or here on YouTube, please, because I don't really check my accounts. I, I might as well just like close those accounts. I don't use them very much like Facebook and Instagram. Anyway, good job, everybody. Keep it up. Um, now, why why did this interest me in the first place? The reason why is because I'm keeping track of embassies that have been opened in Israel, or sorry, in Jerusalem, like recognizing Jerusalem as the capital of Israel, because that's what this is all about. That's why it makes news. Um, those that are against Israel are not happy whenever this happens, um, but I'm just taking note of it. Like, now, we don't take sides. As members of the church, um, we've covered this before. We don't take sides in this conflict. We know what prophecy is. And we allow the Lord to do what he's going to do, but it's not like we're openly hostile toward Palestinians or um, Muslims or, you know, uh, we don't do that. But I think it's important to keep this in mind, what's going on and how things are changing, because um, this could very well be prophetic. It could be important in the lead up to the second coming um, that more and more people, more and more countries are recognizing Jerusalem as the capital. Because eventually, when the second coming happens, uh, everyone is going to recognize Jerusalem as one of the world capitals, and then New Jerusalem in, here in America as the, um, the second world capital. We're going to have the two world capitals, Old Jerusalem, New Jerusalem. So anyway, I don't know if this kind of, if this in any way plays into that process, but so the first one uh, was under President Trump. Uh, where he moved the United States Embassy to Jerusalem on May 14th, 2018. Uh, on our calendar, that's Israel's, um, the day that it was established, its birthday. So it was symbolic, um, <laughs> moving it over, <coughs> sorry, moving it over on that day. Uh, two days later, it was Guatemala. And then a couple years later, Kosovo. Um, a couple months after that, Honduras. And then in 2023, uh, we had four different countries open up uh, or move their embassies to Jerusalem. Papua New Guinea. Oh, I'm sorry. No, sorry. Only Papua New Guinea moved it, but we had Paraguay, Congo, the uh, Democratic Republic of the Congo, and Argentina who pledged to move their embassies 
to Jerusalem. So we're still waiting for that to actually happen. And then we have this one that we're about to talk about that opened on the 1st of February. And then uh, Argentina, Argentina renewed its pledge to move the embassy because um, you had uh, essentially the president-elect that that first you know pledge to move the embassy, and now that he is officially president, he renewed the pledge. So that that'll probably be happening shortly. Okay, all right. So this is what we got. So by my count, we have one, two, three, four, five, and. Uh, kind of six this 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 isn't really like an actual embassy i still think it's significant so i may change this and may not count it as six i i have i have no idea but for right now i'm just gonna say six okay so let's get into some of the details here this is on the jerusalem post okay here's a picture of the like the ceremony taking place a first ever quote-unquote indigenous embassy was launched in Israel at an event attended by more than 200 people, including ambassadors from around the world. It is the 100th embassy to open in the state of Israel. So this is talking about the country of Israel, not Jerusalem. The 100th embassy to open in the state of Israel, according to the foreign ministry. The World Bank defines indigenous peoples as, quote, distinct social and cultural groups that share collective ancestral ties to the lands and natural resources where they live, occupy, or from which they have been displaced, end quote. According to Amnesty International, 476 million indigenous people are living in more than 90 countries. They belong to more than 5,000 different indigenous peoples, dang, that's a lot, and make up 5% of the world's population. Okay, the Jerusalem Embassy has support from indigenous leaders from all around the world, including Singapore, Taiwan, and then I have these ones that are highlighted in red, and that's because these are people that we would associate with either Lamanites or Nephites. I'll get to that in just a second in case you don't know what I'm talking about. Samoa, American Samoa, Hawaii, Tahiti, New Caledonia, Solomon Islands, Australia, Papua New Guinea, which the country of Papua New Guinea officially has an embassy in Jerusalem, but we're talking about the indig indigenous peoples of Papua New Guinea, Cook Islands, Tonga, Fiji, Native American chiefs, and Paramount chiefs from S Southern Africa. Okay, before we move on, Let's just do a quick reminder, or you may not know this, that um, people, indigenous peoples of the Pacific, like in Hawaii, New Zealand, Tonga, Samoa, have been recognized as the church as having descended from the Nephites. Um, let's just read a few, a few of these. You know what? Let me pull up the scripture really quick. Okay, so we're actually, we're looking at the Book of Mormon, Alma, chapter 63, verses 5 through 8. <clears throat> And it came to pass that Hagoth, he being an exceedingly curious man, therefore he went forth and built him an exceedingly large ship on the borders of the land bountiful by the land desolation, <clears throat> and launched it forth into the West Sea by the narrow neck which led into the land northward. And behold, there were many of the Nephites who did enter therein and did sail forth uh, with much provisions, and also many women and children, and they took their course northward. And thus ended the thirty and seventh year. And in the thirty and eighth year, this man built other ships, and the first ship did also return, and many more people did enter into it. <clears throat> and they also took much provisions and set out again to the land northward. And it came to pass that they were never heard; they were never heard of more. And we suppose that they were drowned in the depths of the sea. And it came to pass that one other ship did did also sail forth, and whither she did go, we know not. So this is gives rise to um, some of these statements here. So this one is from uh, George Reynolds in the Journal of Discourses, volume 26, pages 157 to 158, First Council of the Seventy. We have been interested in hearing the report of Brother Edward Partridge, who, was, who has returned from a mission to the Sandwich Islands, where the work of the Lord has been received for many years in a very gratifying manner to the remnant of the house of Israel who dwell thereon. Uh, it is also noticeable that the Maori, a people that's from New Zealand, 
Uh, the Maori, a people of a kindred race to the Hawaiian who inhabit the islands of New Zealand, many hundreds, hundred miles to the southward in the Pacific Ocean, are also receiving the glad tidings of the gospel of Christ with joy, and that hundreds are being added to the church at the present time. It has long been the belief of the Latter-day Saints that these races are offshoots of the great people who once flourished upon this continent, who were brought out of the land of Jerusalem under Lehi, Mulek, and others, and uh, who have inhabited this land from, from about 600 years before Christ, that the people whose remnants are now found scattered far and wide over the, nor- the North and Southern American continents. All right, and I'll just move on from that. So here we have Spencer W. Kimball, um, official report of the Samoa Area Conference held in Pago Pago in Apia, Samoa. He says... Uh, He's quoting Joseph Fielding Smith. I would like to say uh, to you, brethren and sisters from New Zealand, you are some of Hagoth's people, and there is no perhaps about it, end quote. So I guess now to Spencer W. Kimball. He didn't want any arguments about it. That was definite. So you are of Israel. You've been scattered. Now you are being gathered. So that's pretty clear. We have it from two different prophets. Uh, this one is from, geez, I need to redo this section and make it a little bit, a little bit clearer. I'll just read it. Quote, it might be of interest to you to know that when Elder Spencer W. Kimball set me apart for my mission to New Zealand in 1946, he said, quote, we bless you with power and the gift of tongues to learn the language of the Maori. We set you apart among the children, among the children of Lehi to do good. So acknowledging that the uh, indigenous people of New Zealand are descended from Lehi. David O. McKay, dedicatory prayer delivered by President McKay at New Zealand Temple. Uh, we express gratitude that to these fertile islands thou didst, thou didst guide descendants of Father Lehi and hast enabled them to prosper. Okay. Um, I want to see if I can find one about Hawaii. No, I have it here somewhere. Yeah. Elder Matthew Cowley of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles speaking to the Hawaiians. Quote, Brothers and sisters, you are God's children. You are Israel. You you have in your veins the blood of Nephi. Yeah. And then I have a few others, but uh, that's, that's enough for now. So that's what I find interesting is that you have... Um, these Pacific Islanders as well as Native Americans that uh, make up this group of people that are opening this embassy, this embassy in Jerusalem. So that may be prophetic. There may be something more to that. It's just interesting to note. Uh, let's continue on. Attendees at the embassy's launch on Thursday night came from many of these countries, including several tr- tribal chiefs, a princess, and a king. Many wore traditional garb. The embassy, a project of the Indigenous Coalition for Israel, uh, ICFI, and spearheaded by Jerusalem Deputy Mayor Flor Hassan Nahom, uh, will be located on the Friends of Zion campus. The idea of the embassy is to help change the narrative among Indigenous people worldwide. Quote, The main narrative of our haters is to try to separate the Jewish people from their native land, Hassan Nome explained. She said other indigenous people who understand what it is to be a people from a land are optimally po- optimally poised to fight this false narrative. Quote, you are the fifth embassy to open in Jerusalem, which is very special, Hassan Nahom concluded. Now, I, I, don't, I don't know about that because by my count, if this was an official embassy, it would actually be the sixth. The first being the United States, second Guatemala, Third, Kosovo. Fourth, uh, Honduras. Fifth, Papua New Guinea. And then sixth, the indigenous peoples. Um, I have my references over here in case you want to check it out, but I think that's incorrect. Um, Friends of Zion founder and CEO Mike Evans noted that that there are evangelicals among, among most communities of indigenous people, and they, quote, will become our first ambassadors, end quote. However, Nassan Naum, I don't know if that's Nahom, 
uh, I don't know, pointed out that the embassy will be inclusive of people from all faiths and religions. She said the embassy is meant to be a hub for indigenous peoples visiting Israel and a tangible expression of their support. I don't know what that means. I mean, I think it's great. I, I don't know what that means, though. <laughs> like, if I'm like an indig, if I'm an indi, yeah, sorry, if I am from an indigenous uh, people or tribe, and I wanted to go visit Israel, like, like what would I go there and then do something? Or would, I don't understand, like, like who would work there and what their work would be. But I think it's great. If you have like any ideas or if you understand what this is, let me know. Anyway, similar to the International Christian Embassy in Jerusalem, it will not officially represent any of the governments where the host nations live. So here we have Christian Embassy of Jerusalem. I might have to look into that and add that to the list. I don't know how long that's been in Jerusalem or how many other of these um, like non-official embassies there are, but I'll look into that later. Um, on this website, this is Indigenous Embassy sorry, this is a Jewish news syndicate talking about the same story. It says, while not any embassy in the, okay, while not an embassy in the ordinary sense, it will not represent governments of the indigenous peoples, host nations, or the indigenous peoples themselves. It has been recognized as an embassy by the state of Israel. So that's kind of interesting. It's like, like kind of like officially recognized. It just doesn't serve like the same function per se as like an official embassy. I don't know. It's, it's kind of weird. Um, and then I wanted to read this from CBN. I actually saw this on uh, their YouTube channel because I follow some of the stories that they cover on YouTube. Um, okay, so this is Dr. Sh uh, Sherry Trotter, co-founder of New Zealand's Holocaust and Anti-Semitism Foundation, Establish the Indigenous Coalition for Israel. So that's interesting. Somebody from New Zealand, right? Quote, almost immediately we were hearing, we, we were hearing it's like a placard. 75, 75, oh my gosh, 75 years of is Israeli colonial oppression as if that's some sort of reason for Hamas to attack Israel. So how do we counter that? Well, we have to retell the story. We have to educate. We have to get the truth out there. End quote. Trotter believes the truth is that the Jews have decolonized the land. That means that they have come back to their original homeland. Quote, our message tonight, first of all, we love Israel. Most of the people of South Africa love Israel and the Jews. Uh, end quote. Said Regent Zami Thomas, a member of South Africa's Koei Messianic tribe. The tribe signed a covenant with Israel last year. After their government charged Israel with genocide at the International Court of Justice, tribe members tribe members offered an apology. Yeah, that's something that I haven't covered on my channel. Uh, I'm sure most of you already know about it, that South Africa went to the International Court of Justice and they're uh, charging Israel with genocide because of, um, because of them going into the Gaza Strip and there's been a lot of casualties, but um, I think it's mostly uh, political. It, you know, it's that it's that side that's ant antagonistic toward Israel, and it's mostly a political thing, from my point of view. But um, here we have indigenous people from South Africa uh, that don't agree with that. So, anyway, it's just it's really interesting to watch this happen. Um, you know, are we going to have more announcements this year from other countries? that they're going to move their embassy to Jerusalem. I don't know, but once it happens, I'll, I'll let you know. If you come across a story, please send it my way. Um, I don't always catch everything. And then um, I'll do a video to share the news. But this is the latest development. Uh, indigenous peoples open up an embassy, not a real embassy, but a just, a, you know, a symbolic move um, something that would support Israel viewing their Jerusalem as their capital. So, okay, well, that's going to be it for this one. If you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe, like this video if you liked it, leave your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. Also, make sure to share it, and I'll talk to you guys later.